everybody doing? Good. Great. Great to be here. Great occasion. This is the first time in a while we've only had one graduate, but uh, we congratulate Terrence on his endurance and perseverance. One of the the only one from his class who made it. <laughs> All right. Lone stranger. Very impressive. I'm so glad I got to know Terrence and I'm Amen. grateful to call you friend and brother and I've been very impressed with your your nature, your how polite you are and I pray that you'll go a long way. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you, Lord, for Terrence and thank you for this occasion. We know, Lord, that <clears throat> As has been said many times before, this is only the beginning for his new life, and we're thankful that that he's got you, the Holy Spirit, living inside of him as he goes forward from here, that the days to come, he'll live them with you guiding him and with your word and your Holy Spirit living inside of him and giving him the power that he needs. I pray, Father, for the decisions that he makes, even right after he walks out the door, Lord, that that you'll guide each and every step that he takes. And we're thankful, Lord, and, and grateful for the opportunity to get to know him. And thank you for sharing him with us. And that's my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. How are y'all doing today? Good deal. Well, today we're here to celebrate a victory. This man, once bound by the enemy, running from God, and actively destroying his life, is sitting here on this front row today waiting to tell you his story of redemption. He has discovered a new way of living in Christ Jesus because he has discovered that Jesus will take you any way you come, but he will never leave you there. Jesus may have found you in your sin, your addiction, your poverty, your sickness, or your disease, but Terrence knows that if you will allow him, he will pull you out of the pit you're in and take you to a better place. In John 10.10, 10, Jesus said this, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. God wants us to have an abundant, blessed life. But the choice is ours. I've heard many people say that life has cheated them or they got a bad rap or somebody ripped them off. And some of those things may have happened. But God is not the author of the tragedy in our lives. There are just two forces of evil that we can blame for our misfortune, and neither one of them is God. The first is the thief that we just read about in John 10.10, 10. and the other, well, the other is us. That's right, it's us. We choose, we choose either life and prosperity or death and destruction for our life. The choice is ours. God makes this very clear in Deuteronomy 30.15 when he says this, See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to Him, and to keep His commands, decrees, and laws. Then you will live and increase, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away, and you are not obedient, and if you are drawn away to bow down to other gods and worship them, I declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. That verse speaks of choices. It speaks of our choices. Through our actions, we choose either life or death. Why then do we so frequently choose death? Jesus talked about this in John 3.19. He said this, This is the crisis that we're in. God's light streamed into the world, but men and women everywhere ran for the darkness. They went for the darkness because they were not really interested in pleasing God. Everyone who makes a practice of doing evil is addicted to denial and delusion, hates the light of God, and won't come near it, fearing a painful exposure. Fearing a painful exposure. God's light streamed into the world. Okay? God's light streamed into the world, but men and women everywhere ran for the darkness, and they fear a painful exposure. But anyone working and living in truth in reality welcomes the light of God. If we're walking in truth in reality, we welcome the light of God. When Jesus found us, he found us in the darkness. The darkness that we chose, 
but he refused to leave us there. In John 8, 12, he said this, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Then in Matthew 5, 14, he said this, You are the light of the world. As Christians, how do we learn to walk in God's light? Then, how do we learn to be the light of the world? Well, we must first develop godly habits in our lives. And we must learn to hear and obey the voice of the Lord. So how do we do that? Well, that's what this program is really all about. However, in order for us to grow into maturity and begin to walk in the light instead of the darkness, there are some new habits that need to be developed. And those habits are developed right here. Habits that are necessary if we are to survive and actually thrive when we get out of here. First, we need to read our Bibles. That's really important. Joshua 1.8 says this, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Second, we need to find and become a vital part of a Bible-believing church. Hebrews 10.25 says this, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more, as you see the day approaching. I believe it's not hard to see the day approaching these days, is it? We also need to learn to tithe. Malachi 3.10 says this, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food, in my house. And test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour out on you such a blessing that you will not be able to receive it. Finally, we need to pray. Ephesians 6.18 says this, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Moses said this, I set before you today life and prosperity, death, and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to Him, and keep His commands, decrees, and laws. Then you will live and increase, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. Terence made his choice. Terence walked away from death and destruction, and he has begun his journey to life and prosperity. I have the pleasure of introducing Terence to you this afternoon. Terrence, glad to have you today. Glad you made it. Amen. I would like to begin with the fact that Terrence is not a flashy individual. He is definitely not. If he were a car, he'd be a minivan. He'd be a minivan. He wouldn't be a Maserati. He can carry a load. He can haul the kids to soccer practice. He's extremely versatile, but he ain't no Maserati. Okay? And he will probably never grace the cover of GQ magazine. I'm sorry, Terrence. It's just not going to happen, brother. Okay? He just goes about his business quietly getting the job done. And that is what he has done here for the last seven months. He has diligently studied his Bible and done his homework. He has frequently asked probing questions about what he has learned or what he is meditating on. Now, not as many questions as Havelka asked, but no one can compete with Havelka in that category. He has worked in the kitchen, on the dock, done his chores, and for the last several months he's done an excellent job in the laundry. But the most important things that Terrence has done since he's been here is to reconnect with his wife, embrace a new life, and develop a close, intimate, personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Terrence, I'm truly going to miss you, man. Easy to get along with. You always have a kind word and a smile for everyone in the building. You've done everything that has been asked of you without complaint, and you've been a consistent source of good cheer, which is desperately needed in this day and time. I've got two scriptures for you today, Terrence. The first is Philippians 3, 12 through 16, and it says this. Not that I've already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may hold, lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Therefore, let us, as many as are mature, have this mind. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us be of the same mind. And finally, 2 Peter 1, 5-9, which says this, So don't lose a minute in building on what you've been given. 
complementing your basic faith with good character, spiritual understanding, alert discipline, passionate patience, reverent wonder, warm friendliness, and generous love, each dimension fitting into and developing the others. With these qualities active and growing your lives, no grass will grow under your feet. No day will pass without its reward as you mature in your experience of our Master Jesus. Without these qualities, you can't see what's right before you, oblivious that your old sinful life has been wiped off the books. Terrence, you're a new man. But Jesus has begun a good work in you, but he's faithful to complete it. Uh, it's not done. You just got started. So when you go home, continue on in what the things that you've learned. Continue to go to church. Continue to read your word. Continue to pray with your wife. And when you get home, the most important thing you can do is not lose all the socks in the laundry like you did here. <laughs> now you got your chance to respond to that. Too. All right. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Bob. And I thank everyone for uh, being here at um, Faith Mission. And um, Steve, I enjoy being with you. And um, all the one y'all teach class, Steve, Bob, Diane, and um, yeah, Bob, Steve, Diane. Then, okay, then um, Dennis, I like, you know, being with you, and Bill, you're a good person I'll be talking with. So and everyone around me will want to work with me. I enjoy working with y'all and y'all working with me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. <clears throat> Terrence, put your mask on so we can get close. What do you say? <laughs> I can't worry about all this social distancing. There you go. Well, guys. Aren't you proud of Terrence? Man. Yeah. Where you, where's home, Terrence? Uh, Garland, Texas. Garland. Yeah. You going back when? Uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Uh -huh. We're really going to miss you around yeah. here. But I pray yeah. God's best for you. Okay. Amen. Jeff, why don't you come up here and lead us in prayer, brother? I'd also like to know, today's Terrence's birthday, y'all. Oh. Well, great Graduate day. on your birthday. Yeah, happy birthday. birthday. We'll sing for you in there. Uh, 35th birthday. 35th. Yeah, With what, 50, 15 years experience on that? Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day, and thank you for this celebration of Terrence, God. I thank you for, the, for his heart, and I thank you for his spirit, God. And I just pray that you be with him as he leaves here and goes back to his wife. And God, I just pray that you, re, you protect him from this day forth, God. And I just pray that, that if there ever becomes a time where he's, he begins to struggle, that he knows that the faith mission will always be here for him, that we'll always be a phone call away, and we'll be there to encourage him and, and redirect him back to you, God. I thank you for every single person here in this program right now, whatever the stage in the program they're in, God. And I pray that they use this day as a beacon of hope to get to the next level in the recovery and where they're ultimately going to end up with, uh, with your mission for them in mind, God. I thank you for every blessing you've poured down on us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's eat.